So let's move on to process two, which is called plan stakeholder management. Plan stakeholder management is all about planning on how to keep your stakeholders engaged. So you've identified your stakeholders. The big question is how do you keep all of them engaged on the project? How do you bring them in at the right time and how do you get them focused? When we plan stakeholder management as project managers, our goal is to develop a strategy to meet the needs of all stakeholders. One of our aims is to develop a stakeholder management plan, which is a plan on how to keep the stakeholders engaged, get them engaged and keep them engaged. One of the things that we could use to plan our stakeholder management is called a stakeholder engagement assessment matrix. This was introduced to the PMBOK guide in the PMBOK guide fifth edition. And as you can see, it's a matrix that charts where your stakeholders currently are, and we use a C for current, and where we desire them to be, which is a D. D for desired, C for current. So stakeholder one is currently resistant. However, we want stakeholder one to become supportive. D is where we desire that stakeholder to be. Stakeholder two is currently in a neutral position, but we desire that they be in a leading role, which means leading themselves. And stakeholder three is currently supportive, and we desire that, that they be supportive. So we have the stakeholder three currently where we want them to be. So it says stakeholder three is at the desired engagement level, while stakeholders one and two require further communications and additional actions to move them to the desired level of engagement. So that's a helpful tool that you can use to get your stakeholders engaged, to plan out where you want them to be, and ultimately come out with some ideas of how to get them to be in that position that you desire them to be in. This is a stakeholder management plan, which is talked about in the PMBOK Guide 5th edition. In this example, you can see we've got the different aspects of the project that the stakeholders would be interested in, uh, their current level of participation, where we want them to ultimately get to, uh, which is the desired level of project participation. We also have information that needs to be distributed to them, the language and the content and the format of that information. We also have the time frame and the frequency of distribution. We have an assessment of the stakeholder impact, and then we have potential strategies for gaining support or reducing obstacles. This column is extremely important because this is really where your strategy is. This is really where your plan on how to keep them engaged is. So you can see gain buy-in from CEO inner circle members. So the strategy that the PM has adopted to keep the stakeholder engaged is to get the CEO's inner circle members engaged to highlight project success or to highlight issues at the CEO's inner circle meeting. So in other words, if you get people who are close to the CEO, one of the stakeholders, if you get them engaged, then you're likely to get his attention, especially when they keep bringing up the project at their weekly meeting. So that's an example of a stakeholder management plan. And that pretty much wraps up our look at how to plan stakeholder management. It's all about that final plan of how you're going to keep your stakeholders engaged on the project, the strategies and the ideas. And remember that you can actually use the brain power of your team or the brain power of people around you, your stakeholders, to plan on how to keep other stakeholders engaged. In the next section, we'll be taking a look at what it means to manage stakeholder engagement.